Coming up on the St. Paul Forum, what's happening this winter at St. Paul's Historic Landmark Center? Welcome to the St. Paul Forum. I'm Laura K. Prosser, and with me today is Judy Brooks, Community Programs Director for the Landmark Center. Judy, welcome. Thank you, Laura. It's great to be here. So now, Judy, SPNN has covered many events for yes, the la have. Landmark Center. Now, tell me a little bit about the history behind the building itself. Well, Landmark was built in 1902. It took 10 years to build and it was originally built as a federal building for St. Paul, for the whole area. So inside was the post office, uh, the custom house, because as everyone who lives in St. Paul knows, St. Paul is the northernmost port on the Mississippi. So that was the custom house. And also all of the federal offices, federal judiciary office, uh, courts as well. So uh, the Eighth Circuit Court of Appeals and the uh, federal district district courts had their offices and courtrooms in Landmark Center. So it really was uh, truly a federal building for the upper Midwest. Wow, that's amazing. And now, where and who runs it these days? Well, Landmark Center, um, as, the, as, the, uh, as the population expanded in the area, <clears throat> the, um, the needs of the community outgrew Landmark's ability to, to grow with it. So many of the, the federal courts and the post office and a lot of the federal offices moved, moved into other out. locations. So in the 50s and 60s, Landmarks, uh, then the old federal courts building, became uh, quite empty. And, uh, you know, progress was marching forward and mm -hmm. the uh, Richardsonian Romanesque, Chateauesque, castle-like structure was not seen as a monument to progress. So the, there was a discussion of what should happen to this. The federal government didn't want it anymore. Um, luckily, a group of determined citizens spearheaded an effort to save the building. They wanted um, it. Yes, and for its historic and architectural significance. And so the building was sold to the city of St. Paul, who then sold it to Ramsey County. So today, the building is still owned by Ramsey County. Um, the organization that manages and programs Landmark Center is called Minnesota Landmarks. It's a nonprofit uh, agency, which is who I work for. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a twofold mission. One is to preserve and maintain Landmark Center as a historic monument. And the other is to fill it with cultural programs of low cost or free access for families and for individuals. So. In the sense, it's a cultural center for the right. community, as well as this beautiful, uh, sustained work of architecture. Well, it's really become a home, not just for the history buffs with the architecture, mm -hmm. but for the arts, for Exa theater, exactly. for Exactly, and in fact, the offices that used to be occupied by all of the, like the Surveyor General's office, um, <laughs> is now, they're now offices for nonprofit arts organizations, for small, so, uh, the Rose Ensemble, the Minnesota Boy Choir, um, the Schubert Club, all have their offices there, um, which is wonderful because they bring so much to the building and its programming menu. Well, and these organizations are key for your reoccurring and ongoing schedule, but before we get yes. to that, let's talk about the winter schedule. What's going on this season? Well, um, you know, I'm, I was born and raised in St. Paul, so wintertime in downtown St. Paul uh, the, especially this, this last 10 years, has been fantastic. Rice Park is so beautifully lit, and of course the Wells Fargo skating rink outside. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's absolutely magical, and in the middle of all that is Landmark Center, so we're kind of at ground zero for the holidays in downtown St. Paul, and uh, we couldn't be happier. And um, for our winter programming, right away in January, on January 8th, we have a free, back-to-back uh, -back free concerts mm -hmm. by uh, the internationally acclaimed Minnesota Boy Choir, 
who will do two concerts and those fill up very quickly. It's free, of course, and it's it can be standing room only. Uh, but those are those have become a tradition for many families to come down and cap off their holidays with the boy choir concerts. Well, so. and that's not the only concerts you have going on, correct? We have some popular musical offerings that we offer throughout the year, um, as does uh, one of our agencies, the Schubert Club. The Schubert Club has free courtroom concerts of upcoming and emerging classical musicians and composers wow. every Thursday between October and April. So every Thursday, you could come at noon into the largest of our four courtrooms, courtroom 317, and hear beautiful performances. Um, and that's free, and those fill up that quickly. Landmark Center also uh, produces a series called Landmark Live, which is Americana and folk music. Okay. Um, and that usually takes place in the fall. Um, and then in the summer, we have Music in the Cafe, which is free. Um, music by local musicians on various Wednesdays right on the Courtiel. So people can bring a lunch, buy a lunch, and sit and listen to a wonderful concert. In the past, we've had the Cafe Accordion Orchestra, Joey Ryan and the Inks. Um, we were one of the first folks to present Davina and the Vagabonds. Oh, wow. <laughs> so uh, you'll never know what you hear, but it's a lot of fun. They're very popular. Um, but then coming up after the Boy Choir, we start all of our uh, our big broad menu of community programming, cultural programming uh, through our Sundays at Landmark series that's ongoing throughout the year. Tell us about that series. What does Sundays bring for your audience? Sundays at Landmark is really our signature program. It's, it's, um, it's a, become a massive umbrella for a number of cultural programs. Sundays at Landmark began in 1990 um, and it's almost every Sunday and it's almost always free. And uh, it begins in September and runs through May. And so uh, the boy choir concerts fall under that umbrella of Sundays at Landmark. Okay. And um, we, we have a small programming series that exist under the Sundays at Landmark uh, umbrella, such as our very popular Urban Expedition uh, uh, cultural series, which we've been doing since, I want to say, 2005. Well, and, and you guys have been to many different countries have, with that expedition. We have. Um, last year uh, was, um, or I should say this year, 2017, was the first time we repeated a country, which was oh, wow. until then unheard of. And we choose five different countries or cultures to present in each year's Urban Expedition series. Mm -hmm. And um, we immerse our audience then in the culture, music, dance, art, crafts, um, language of, of that culture, that country. And so the five we have this year in order of appearance is Bulgaria, uh, Japan, Iceland, Bolivia, and France. And uh, the first one begins on January 21st, and that's Bulgaria. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Wow. And before this, we were talking about how educational this program and many of your other programs have been for local schools that people bring in for field right. trips and Absolutely. everything else. Um, you know that's something that's very important to our programming um, mission and that is to present programs that not only entertain but enlighten, inform, um, and educate and uh, certainly Urban Expedition does that. Um, uh, teaching through, I mean holistically through uh, oral and visual and spoken word um, all about these cultures. But we do have um, programs that, uh, that truly do educate in, in the more traditional sense. Mm -hmm. um, we have a program called um, the Uncle Sam Lecture Series and we invite uh, noted um, civic leaders or uh, legal practitioners to come in and discuss um, uh, topics of, of federal importance or legal uh, jurisprudence okay. uh, to noontime audiences, and that's very that's very well attended. Oh, um, we have a great partnership going with Global Minnesota. We've uh, it's a spin-off of their Great Decisions series. We call it Global Conversations, and um, we just wrapped up um, our uh, 
fall series with them and we'll have a, a spring series beginning in February and uh, viewers can go to the website to learn more about that. But we, they present um, nationally and internationally acclaimed speakers oh. to come in and talk about very timely uh, geopolitical topics, again, during the noon hour, and um, all free. So that's wonderful. And then our, mm -hmm. our, our building tours also offer an in-depth look at the history of the building, uh, the history of St. Paul and the surrounding communities, as well as some of the, the uh, individuals in St. Paul and in the building's past. So they're very informative and fun. So all sorts of things, and of course the gangsters, the St. Paul <laughs> gangsters. I would be remiss if I didn't mention them. Who wouldn't want to go on a exactly. gangster and, tour? And those, and those are always open. So someone can come in the building and take a little map and do a self-guided tour. But then we do have the guided tours. We have uh, architectural tours. Uh, we have what's called for school children an Uncle Sam Worked Here tour mm -hmm. uh, that's geared toward each grade level where uh, they can come in uh, with their class and learn about specific topics like the Depression, like World War II, um, World War I, that type of thing. And then, of course, our gangster tours. So uh, where you actually meet a few gangsters <laughs> and they tell you about St. Paul and Landmark Center at the time. Uh, we also offer a couple things that are kind of uh, theater mixed with history. Uh, the first is uh, our history plays. Uh, we offer a history play in the fall, usually in late September, mm -hmm. uh, where we try to focus on um, either a trial that happened in Landmark or some other benchmark moment in the building or in St. Paul's history. Mm -hmm. um, so in the past we focused on uh, the life and legacy of James J. Hill. We focused on um, the gangsters, of course, on Evelyn Frechette, Billy, uh, John Dillinger's uh, girlfriend, her of trial course. at Landmark. Um, and just this past year, we, we focused on um, the activities and reminiscences of uh, to Big Tom Brown. He was the very corrupt police chief in St. Paul during the 30s and his partner in crime, Leon uh, Gleckman, who was a huge bootlegger at the time, and how the two of them worked mm. together to create this, this safe haven in St. Paul for the gangsters in the 1920s and 30s. And then, and then in October, uh, I, I would have to argue that uh, combining theater with history, we offer a gangster ghost tour of the building. Ooh. It's, yes, and, um, Folks sign up for these tours. They go out like every 15 minutes. They're led through the building where they encounter the spirits <laughs> of some of notorious, some of St. Paul's most notorious individuals, as well as some FBI G men and a few others. So uh, that's a lot of fun. I bet it is. And um, well, and all this between cultural and mm -hmm. history, it's it's any. Buddy's turn to nerd out and to be just one with 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 the history, I guess, is the exactly. best way to say exactly. it. Exactly, exactly. And, and, um, and that's just like one facet. Mm -hmm. Oh, so yeah. So it's... And you have, you even have art exhibits. We and do. And you have ballet. Let's talk a little bit about those two. So if you didn't get enough with the history tours, we also <laughs> have in the building uh, a number of galleries uh, and museums that are free, and um, which is amazing. Uh, people, our visitors to the building, uh, routinely write in their comments um, the fact that they can come to these museums and they're free of charge and see this amazing work. Um, I, one of those museums is the Gallery of Wood Art, um, oh, wow. sponsored by the American Association of Woodturners, which is a te uh, tenant uh, resident in the building. Mm -hmm. And that gallery is spectacular. Um, it's turned wood. Um, and I'm not talking about table legs and chair legs. <laughs> I'm talking about amazing pieces of, of art, Just um, usually centered on some sort of a theme. Um, and, uh, and oftentimes they'll have wood turning demonstrations going on. And then right across the hall from them is the Schubert Club, which is one of the nation's oldest music societies. They have the Schubert Club Museum where um, visitors can um, listen to and come to understand very early keyboards. There are also um, 
a gamelan, Indonesian gamelan instruments that they can hit, play, hit gongs and so forth. But they also have a manuscript museum. And these are the letters, rough drafts, false starts, the real things by Mozart, Beethoven, Tchaikovsky, Schubert, Handel, it, it's amazing. And it's in a climate controlled room. You can read a love letter that Mozart wrote to his wife, Constanza, and it's, tra it's really great. And it's translated, and it's the real thing. So it's, it's quite a collection, and again, it's free. Well, it's free. You can take your kids to it. You Absolutely. can go walk through yourself. Absolutely. You could do a date there. I mean, it, it's it's great. Summer and winter, it doesn't matter. It doesn't. And then, it's free activity. And then we have um, two galleries that that Minnesota that uh, Landmark Center operates. Um, one is called the North Gallery, and on our first level, uh, first floor level, we have a, a, a gallery that's um, curated with local art and. Um, and it's been really fun. We've been operating that now for about three to four years, and it's just gotten better and better. And uh, that's free and open to the public. And then down on our lower level, um, we have our archive history gallery, uh, which has huge newspaper pages that kids can turn that talk about the building's opening. It's gangster days, all the headlines from <laughs> the, the gangster trials, as well as the building's decline and its reopening. So. Um, so that's, you know, uh, when we talk about the building being saved, that's what this was all saved for. Uh, what was, and um, we reopened the doors in the early 80s um, with a renovation and restoration project that was all funded by individuals and the community. I mean, well, school kids had big jars on their in their classrooms to save the old federal courts building, so it was really well, cool. Well, and the organizations, the diversity in the organizations involved mm -hmm. with offices there, with the different yeah. art installations there, it wouldn't be what it was without all those diverse absolutely, individuals absolutely. contributing. It's a, it's a, it's a perfect, I, I would call it a cultural marketplace. It really is, because you can come there and you could spend a day there with your family. And um, there's a little cafe on the first floor, Anita's Cafe for homemade food. But you know, you can come there and easily spend four to five hours just experiencing. And if you come when there's a cultural program going on, then you've got a full day. Now, what is it like managing all these different topics and avenues and organizations? Well, you know, it's, um, I'm going to just boast and say I think that Minnesota Landmarks has a pretty talented staff. Um, they're outstanding uh, organizers and managers because it's not just programming. Um, that's under my <laughs> jurisdiction uh, and I have a staff of four. Um, but the, the other side of the coin is that we also must depend on uh, on contributions and donations, grants, and earned revenue to help support our programming mission and our preservation mission. You were talking about funding earlier. Exactly, right? and one of the ways we do that is by renting out some of our spaces, mm. specifically the beautiful Cortile Atrium that rises five stories to a oh, skylight. Wow. So we have a lot of weddings. <laughs> you know, someone said, how many weddings do you do in a year? And it's like, well, if there's 52 <laughs> Saturdays a year, 52. Uh, and that doesn't include Friday nights. Mm -hmm. And now we're starting to see uh, a few weddings pop up on Sundays. But we rent the building out for meetings, life celebrations, um, and other private events. Mm -hmm. uh, and that revenue helps sustain the building um, and you know, helping with paint on the walls and, and uh, fixing things that are broken or and whatnot, so uh, that we can continue to exist in good shape for the next hundred years. You have the rental over here. You have the programming over here, um, and then underneath, supporting everybody is a fantastic building and maintenance and event crew. So, it's a big job. It's a big building, um, <laughs> but I think that um, we. You know, we um, we have a lot of good supporters, and um, including Ramsey County, which, as I said, owns the building, and each year they give us a stipend for um, the basic operation of the building. 
you know, uh, utilities, heating, cooling, and so forth, mm -hmm. um, and which helps us go a long way. Um, and and the county commissioners themselves have been very active supporters. They volunteered our programs, they give our welcomes and so forth. So it's been great, it's been a great partnership. So for those outside of those commissioners that want to get involved, whether it's volunteering, donations, how, how can our audience be involved with? You know, I'm so glad you said volunteer um, because that's a whole nother thing that we do. We have a volunteer corps of over 80 individuals, oh, wow. um, many of whom have been volunteering for multiple decades. And our volunteer corps is so valuable to us. Um, they, they run our gift shop. They, uh, we are also the home of the downtown visitor center for St. Paul and Ramsey County and parts thereof. <laughs> um, so they staff our visitor information center. Um, they also staff our, some of our public events, whether it's handing out programs, mm -hmm. assisting kids with crafts, um, taking money at the door, um, so special events. We, they help with our mailings. Uh, they help with decorating the building during the holidays. Mm -hmm. So um, they give tours. All of our tour guides are volunteers. Wow. So it's it's huge. We have we depend upon our volunteer corps, and we are always looking for more volunteers. And who do they contact to be a volunteer? They could contact Jennifer Reinhardt, our volunteer director, and her telephone number is six five one two nine two three two three seven and she will be more than happy to send them an application and a list of areas that they may have interest in. I bet. Mm -hmm. Now, for those that want to donate or be involved more in the funding or starting their own program? Starting your own program, um, that would be uh, some form of, of programming partnership and that would be getting in touch with me <laughs> um, and, uh, and talking to me. And as far as donating, people can go right to our website um, which um, uh, will direct them then to give uh, to our Give Men page and also uh, instruct them as to how to, to send something or get in contact with um, our development folks. Or so. how to get in contact with rental space or anything That's like that. That's on our website on as website. well. Yes, it is. And um, so, yes, our website is great. It's a great resource. It also has calendars for um, upcoming events. Um, and exhibits, uh, so it's it's a good resource. Are there any exhibits or upcoming events that you're really excited about in the winter season or even in the spring season mm -hmm. to come? Well, uh, right now the exhibit that's in our North Gallery um, is very, very cool, I have to say. It's Skyways of St. Paul, and it's being curated by the Preservation Alliance of Minnesota, which is one of our building residents. And it's uh, local local photographers viewing St. Paul through its skyways wow. and um, I feel that some of the the composition of some of the photographs is amazing they're great photos and some of them were actually taken with their cell phones so that's incredible that kind of photography is becoming more and more widely used it's, and recognized it absolutely is and another exhibit that's coming up in the summer will be hosting an exhibit, a big exhibit on, on St. Paul called St. Paul Reviewed, and that's big R, little e, capital V, I, E, W, Reviewed, through lenses, wow. and, and in some cases uh, um, uh, through painting. But the St. Paul Camera Club is having its 125th anniversary this year Perfect in timing. 2018, and so they're bringing in an exhibition um, that was, that's going to be uh, the result of a challenge to their members to photograph St. Paul either through its people, its natural beauty, or its architecture. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be coming in from May through mid-July. And then when that goes out, in is coming the art of Jean Klosfeld, a uh, local artist, whose uh, whimsical paintings reflect St. Paul, her view of St. Paul. Mm -hmm. And then we'll have um, a St. Paul photographer uh, David Haberline, who's also going to be exhibiting elsewhere in the building during that time, his views of St. Paul from a different perspective. So it's it's all going to be all about St. Paul this summer and St. Paul Reviewed. We're really excited about that. What kind of impact does 
programs and exhibits like these have on our community and why is it so important? Well, first of all, I think with the programs, the cultural programs, there are so many groups and individuals and, um, and cultures within our community that, um, that people may be unaware of or the groups themselves may not have an opportunity to bring everyone together from throughout the community to, to celebrate or exhibit their culture. So I think that's what Urban Expedition we have in on uh, February 18th, we're having our third Carpathian Festival, <laughs> which features the seven countries and cultures that comprise the in, within the Carpathian Mountains. Mm. So Hungary, Romania, um, uh, Slovakia, the Czech Republic, all of those come together and we get a huge turnout of people who can honestly say, I know nothing about mm -hmm. these cultures. And um, last year it drew 1,100 people to come and see what these cultures were about. They so, get to breathe, they yeah, get to taste exactly. it, they get and, to be a part and of it. And that's a boon to the, to the groups uh, in, those, in the local Hungarian community uh, in the Twin Cities. So, and same with Urban Expedition. Um, uh, last year we, we uh, visited Togo and we had so many people who didn't know anything about the African country of Togo. And the Togolese in our community said, when would we ever have an opportunity to come and bring our native dances and our, our um, traditional costume and so forth and show that to the public? So um, it, really, it really provides a forum for um, a cultural give and take. And as far as the exhibits, the beauty of that is uh, or you know, with the, whether it's the Wood Turners, uh, the Schubert Club Museum, or our North Gallery, is that um, it, there's an entire range of I think multi-sensory opportunities for kids, families to come in and experience art and to really think about it. Generally, in our North Gallery, when we have an exhibit, we try to have some sort of response available for people to think about. Um, we had an exhibit. Uh, last year called I Am a Woman uh, by a local singer, songwriter, and author um, who brought in these huge photographs of famous women and, and their quotes mm -hmm. that are ins meant to inspire. Well, we asked people who inspires you and asked them to post that on uh, a big bulletin board we had and, and to think about that, think about their response uh, to the art that they've seen. So um, we find that is very popular and it's another angle to connect with the public. Yeah. So Now, I know that with music every week and every season, I'm sure they turn around just like the exhibits turn around. Absolutely. How quickly, if somebody misses out on something, how quickly do they have to be there? Or how quickly do they have to find out what's new? Well, you know, the, the best way to know and keep apprised of what's going on is to uh, sign up to be on our mailing list, um, either a post list, where in which case every other month you'll, patrons will receive columns, our bi-monthly newsletter. Uh, so the next one coming out will be January, February. And, uh, or, and or sign up to be on our email list. Um, and each week we send out an e-blast of This Week at Landmark Center, which has everything that's happening that week and a little sidebar of what's coming up in the week ahead. And I think uh, the best way to navigate Landmark's huge offering of, <laughs> of programs and opportunities is to do both, is to get the weekly e-blast and the bi-monthly newsletter. Um, so that way you will be absolutely sure that you will never miss an event. An event, a moment, or an educational opportunity exactly. for you and your kids. Absolutely. Anybody, take your family, take your friends, walk yourself through St. Paul Historic's Landmark Center and see what it's all about. I'm Laura K. Prasser. Judy, thank you so thank much you, for Laura. joining us. Thank you, Laura. This was very fun. That's it for us at the St. Paul Forum.